So COVID-19 forced most of us to stay at home last year as community quarantines were imposed by the national and local governments. But in some parts of Mindanao, particularly in uh, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, thousands of residents were forced to flee their homes to avoid getting caught in the crossfire between warring forces. The pandemic has made the political transition in the two-year-old autonomous region even more fragile as skirmishes between government forces and extremist groups, inter-clan disputes, and conflicts over land sent thousands of residents to evacuation centers where observing minimum health protocols such as physical distancing, washing of hands with soap, and wearing of face masks is a major challenge. In partnership with Internews, Mindanus welcomes you to COVID conflicts and the peace process, a special edition of its Reporting Mindanao series. Our discussions today will focus on what is happening in South Upi Maguindanao. Next week, we will focus on Marau. May we now call on Carl Aguilas to give us the overview of this event. Uh, in October last year, Mindanus launched an online forum titled Reporting Mindanao to discuss various concerns in Mindanao and to provide journalists a venue to enhance their coverage and understanding of these issues. Under Bangsamoro in Transition series, we discussed in two sessions the midterm review on the implementation of the 2014 Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro between government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and Republic Act 11054, way before proposals for extension of the transition period for another three years or from 2022 to 2025 became a national conversation and a subject of debates. Under Monitoring Marawi, we listened to the report of the Bangsamoro Transition Authorities Special Committee on Marawi, its findings and recommendations and action plans on the nearly four-year rehabilitation efforts. Today and on Saturday, we have a two-part special edition in partnership with Internews to discuss COVID conflicts and the peace process. Because there are still many ongoing conflicts around us and because we cannot cover all of them, we decided to focus on two areas, South Upi in Maguindanao, and as Ami had already said, next Saturday, we will focus on Marawi. We want to give the internally displaced persons or the backwits a platform to air their concerns so that local government units, the regional government of the Bangsamoro, national government agencies, humanitarian agencies, and civil society can help address this. The issues are complex and one session alone is not enough to understand the stories behind the headlines. Peace is a process and so is understanding of all these complexities before us. Daghang salamat, Ami will now introduce our panelists after which we will watch a video production by Ferdinand Cabrera followed by the panel discussion and open forum. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Carol. Uh, we have five panelists, and the first would be uh, Minister Nagib Tinarimbo of the Ministry of Lo Interior and Local Government. He wears two other hats in the Bangsamoro as spokesperson of the BARM and head of the BARM Ready or Rapid Emergency Action on Disaster incident Incidents. Minister Tinarimbo has also served in various capabilities, capacities in the Bangsamoro. He was Executive Secretary of the now defunct Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao from December 2009 to December 2011. He was a member of the government panel in the tripartite review of the implementation of the 1996 final peace agreement with the Moro National Liberation Front and was a member of the legal panel of the peace negotiating panel of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. He was a member of the legal team in the Bangsamoro Transition Commission and was consultant to Senator Jose Miguel Zubiri 
in the crucial days of the deliberations on the organic law for the BARM, which was ratified in a plebiscite in January 2019. Our second panelist is Dr. Jose Joel Puday, an anthropologist currently serving as chair of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology at the Ateneo de, de, de Manila University. He is the son of Mindanao, born and raised in the academic and social institutions of the region. He currently serves as CEO of the Mindanao Institute of Journalism, publisher of the independent online news publication, Minda News. He was a Southeast Asian Visiting Fellow of the Refugee Studies Center at the University of Oxford, where he also earned a doctorate in social and cultural anthropology. He authored the book, Bakwit, Power of the Displaced, published by the Ateneo de Manila University Press, and this won a book award. His recent publication, Conceptualizing Post-Colonial Displacement Beyond Aid and Protection, forms part of the anthology and Freudian Mandela, founding member and executive director of the Dura'i Tambangian Women's Organization Incorporated, has spent decades advocating for the rights of the Tedurai and Lambangian women and girls. Freudian has been voicing the need for women's inclusion at regional and international forums, was a delegate to international and national conferences, including the Global Summit on Sexual Violence in Conflict in 2014, and the Expert Roundtable on Supporting Women's Participation in the Peace Process in 2015. Freulin was appointed member of the First Bangsamoro Transition Commission set up in 2013 that drafted the Bangsamoro Basic Law under the Aquino administration. Congress was not able to pass that law then. Our fourth speaker is Edward Intang Abelardo, Chair of the Nanmoro Indigenous Peoples Network. And the last uh, speaker, our panelist, is Lieutenant Colonel Anubik Atilano, the spokesperson of the 6th Infantry Division. Thank you very much. Now we go to the video presentation. Pagid nga pandemic nga ginaatubang kami, may ara pagid gira, ano na lang ang buhaton sa mga tao diri sa barangay namun, sir? Mm. Gani nga, kung maluoy man ang, ang naghimu sini, tani, istoryahan na lang namun sing maayo. Mm. Hindi na sila magsiling nga amuni, papalukpan-lukpan lang kami diri. Kagtapos, ang pagpalupok nila, mala, layo katama. Hindi lapit. Tani daw ano lang, ano lang ginatabog lang kami diri nga, tabugon lang kami diri sir nga ang mga tanom namo no lang tawa bala nang mga tanom namo diri nga mga niyog. Di sino ang mag ano sina magpulos. Sila kun maghalin kami. Gani nga maning kamot gid kami diri nga bala na kun sigihon na nila kami kapalupok diri, hindi kami maghalin diri sa amon nga barangay. Masakit sa kalu uh, kaluuban namin na wala naman kaming 
uh, kasalanan sa kanila. Uh, ba bakit ginanito uh, kami? Uh, hindi kami makalabas. Siyempre, uh, nung nagdating ang uh, pandemic, hindi kami makalabas, makalabas kasi ano, na lockdown, ganun. May gusto kami puntahan, hindi kami maka, ano, makalabas. Nandiyan. Matakot na. Hmm. Oh, matakot na kami kasi alam mo naman na kami na lamang gibantayan. Ang tanong ko, bakit anong gusto nila sa amin? Yan lang tanong ko. Ako mag-command ibalik natin yung community because we have uh, three sitios affected. And then out of three sitios, uh, meron kaming data na total of 258 household. So sabi ko, uh, aantay ako sa inyo sa part ng uh, ating uh, autoridad, the military and the PNP if the 258 household is ready na ba para ibalik. So through, siguro, through sa kanilang uh, mga uh, validation, validation na medyo hindi pa talaga pwede. So parang sinabi na hold muna konti, hold muna sandali. Because may mga issue pa rin na baka babalik, ganun. So para naman i- I ano natin i kumbaga i ano natin yung community doon sabi ko sige gano na lang yung uh, possible mangyari antay na ako so nagplan na kami to to schedule no with the lieutenant uh, Spina the CEO of uh, Bravo Company 57IB and my chief of police na January 5 ibabalik namin sila kaso lang yun uh, bago lilipas yung uh, 2020 At around uh, past 11, doon nagkaroon naman ng uh, report na wow, nung gabi na yon, papasok ang uh, bagong taon, midnight, is uh, nagkaroon naman ng harassment. Uh, ating issue sa pandemic, ngayon alam naman natin yung guidelines ng pandemic natin, even i-gather natin sila in one place, dapat through protocol, dapat hindi pwede. So kaso lang dito sa atin, sabi ko, uh, we, we consider na isolated, malayo tayo doon sa mga sinasabi natin, although sumusunod tayo sa guidelines. So isa sa problema talaga namin yun, isa sa problema namin, uh, kahit yung mga magpamilya-pamilya, magkamag-anak, buo sila eh, buo sila. And now to comply, to comply doon sa mga, ano, to comply doon sa mga dapat i-comply sa... pandemic natin, the barangay itaw sa ngayon, sabi natin, minsan hindi na nasusunod. Sabakat, ang higit talaga na apektahan, sir, is itong mga kababaihan. May COVID-19 pa. Tapos, itong kaguluhan. Bakwit sila. Paano na lang itong sitwasyon nila, ma eh, sir? Kaya, marami akong naatena na mga ano, talagang hindi ko maiwasan yung mag-emotional, sir. Kah dahil nga sa, sa, sa sitwasyon namin, mm. um, nandyan yung putukan, nandyan yung kagutuman, nandyan yung itong tagulan nga, then may COVID pa. Paano na, na hindi na ma-apply talaga sa yung social distancing at saka yung face mask. So masakit talaga isipin as. Barangay kagawad na ganitong sitwasyon ng mga kababaihan, mga bata, mga edad, may mga bagong nanganganak, may mga lahat-lahat na nan, sari-saring problema nandito yata sa barangay kuya. So, ang tanging panawagan ko, sana mapansin ng gobyerno at ng Bangsamoro uh, government na mahanapan ng kalutasan o solusyon ang problema ito. Yung mga IP rin sa South Upi, uh, may problema sila doon sa land conflict nila at saka nakaba naiwanan din nila yung kanilang lupang ninuno. So gusto namin ipapastrack yung delineation ng ancestral domain uh, nila para uh, matituluhan na po yung mga lupa nila through uh, kadi Kalti. And karamihan din dito, hindi, ganong, hindi na ganong ma-apply ang delineation through uh, <coughs> kadi. Kasi yung kadi, halimbawa sa isang municipality, thickly populated with IPs, is isa lang title. Uh, we delineate the uh, kadi uh, <coughs> through 
uh, one organization doon doon sa organization na yon sila ang maggamitin hindi pwede individual ang mga IP uh, nakasaad diyan sa IP code na later on uh, may mga basihan kami may sunod-sunod kami sa pagbigay ng magandang solusyon sa uh, problema ng mga IP kasi ang IP is peace loving people is pinaka number one na gawin natin is yung idelineate natin yung kanilang ancestral domain yun ang number one kapag madelineate natin yung ancestral domain nila followed by uh, livelihood project uh, yun ang pinakakuan doon then i-organize natin sila and there's, so there are several gaps in um, provision of mental health services from community level to psychiatric level there are several steps and some of those steps are missing here in this area or they need reinforcement they exist but they need reinforcement so that's the activities that we are doing as the icrc is to cover the gaps that maybe are left out in this pyramid mm -hmm. well armed conflict in general has many consequences so livelihood economics financial is one of them as well as fear it could be also physical harm seeing things that uh, maybe you wouldn't see under normal circumstances. So all these things lead to uncertainty. What's going to happen in the next week, the next month, or the next year? So added to the, the actual event itself that may or may not have an impact on the person, the consequences will also, so it will worsen the effects of the event. So healthy coping skills can be something that anybody can do. It can be seeking spiritual guidance. It can be sharing with friends and family. It can be, you have to be careful the social distancing though. Mm -hmm. It can include eating healthy, trying to get decent hours sleep, trying to uh, exercise, avoid fake news in case of COVID. All these kind of issues will help somebody adapt better to a situation that's changing or uncertain. To speak with somebody, a loved one, you don't need money um, to read, to pray. Mm -hmm. There are other things that, yes, if you want to do, start a hobby, you can have hobbies that imply economic, financial need, and others that don't. May we call on the panelists? May we first call on Ms. Uh, Dr. Joel Kanudai? I've, I've prepared this, this sort of presentation. Uh, this, it has been part of my work uh, in the past uh, 10, 15 years, uh, but I've been updating this uh, from time to time. Um, but I would probably look at or, or contribute in this discussion uh, by, by, by presenting more of a macro uh, picture uh, of the displacement and, and displacement uh, situations and problems that that we are that, that we have just seen on the video and and, and probably the broader context and uh, the broader elements uh, associated to these uh, events. Um, we at Mindanao uh, had not been stranger to to, to displacements, and then and even across the country, it's not been a stranger to displacement. So there there has to be an explanation or there has to be a view on um, what accounts for this um, for this recurrent um, uh, conditions that, that we are seeing, recurrent conditions of suffering, uh, recurrent conditions of, uh, of horrific uh, experiences um, that, that's, that's affecting um, um, people, uh, and, and not just one a community, but, but multiple communities. So I would probably offer some thoughts about the scale of the displacement, as well as some of the risks that are structural in nature that, that could partly explain why displacement are happening and, and, and the nature uh, of this uh, displacement as they unfold, uh, meaning um, what are the possible vulnerabilities that, that, that comes with, with displacement. Okay, I'll, I'll start off with last year, um, some, some, some just a few snapshots of what we're seeing. Um, it has been a horrific year last year beyond COVID-19. Uh, in uh, across the country, uh, we've been seeing uh, um, events, uh, very critical events that, that that have affected the lives of of 
more than a million people, in fact. And um, the, the things that you are, uh, the notes that you're seeing on the slides are just a snapshot, a few, few, few events that, that had been that had been unfolding um, in the in the entire year. But but look at the figures in those events. Those are those are staggering. Um, 383,000 people um, displaced uh, in the Mindanao earthquakes. And up north uh, in in the national capital uh, region, central zone area, uh, about fifty three thousand people had been displaced by the eruption of the Al uh, volcano, and um, uh, and across the, the the region, the island in Luzon, and in other parts of the country, there had been typhoon and flooding uh, brought about by uh, by uh, by the annual uh, cataclysmic event uh, that is associated with the typhoon. But now um, scientists and, and scholars have been uh, viewing this as, as, as probably part of the broader, uh, broader unfolding of climate changes uh, that is occurring around the world. Um, and, and of course, uh, in, in Mindanao uniquely, as of towards the end of last year, uh, more than 100,000, well, um, in 2017, 100,000, more than 100,000 people were displaced, but still quite a significant number of, of, of those people are still in displacement uh, in, in Marawi City, even as we uh, speak uh, today. Just, just, to, just to see uh, the, the, broader, the broader picture nationwide, this is, this is how uh, displacement events would, would look like uh, if we would probably be out in the outer space and, and, and would, have, uh, would have the element or the, the power to see in time, uh, back in the past and into the future, uh, this is how 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 spread out uh, displacement events, um, at least in the last. I'm just talking here the last eight years. Um, this this just that put into account the, the 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 displacement that had been going on uh, previously in the in this in these last years. Uh, what what you can see are two patterns of displacement. Uh, one pattern or one one. One flow or one one characteristic uh, are displacement that are induced by disasters, or but that are induced by by uh, hazards uh, as, as as we speak. So they could be earthquakes, um, uh, flooding, uh, typhoons, and and other uh, calamities uh, that that's related to uh, hazard. That not exactly related to nature because that's that's how nature works. Nature nature do what what nature does. But it is when people are placed in the cross hair of the hazards that, that nature can, can, can bring, disaster can, can happen. Uh, and, and, and the other pattern of the conflict, uh, of, the, of, of displacement are induced by, by conflict. This is the, the, the armed encounters. And as you can see um, in, the, in, in the picture, much of the disaster induced displacement are happening in the Northern part of the country, central and Northern part of the country, primarily the, the, the regions of the zone. And Visayas, and a combination of, of, of disaster and conflict induced displacement are going on in Mindanao, which makes it to, to a large degree a tougher case. Um, if we look at the, the, the profile uh, through the years, uh, in the past uh, 12 years, uh, this is how, how, how it looks like. Uh, we're talking of not less than 150,000 displacement a year uh, on conflict-induced alone. If you add disaster-induced displacement into the mix, then you'd be seeing a far more staggering figure of, uh, of, of, of people being displaced from a million to over, a mil of over 5 million people uh, uh, every, every year uh, in the past 2012 years. Um, sorry, in, in the past uh, eight years. Uh, the, 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 this, these figures come from varied sources, but, but they mainly come from the DSWD. There's, a, there's an institution in DSWD that, that's called uh, DROMIC, Disaster Response Office Management. Uh, and and um, institutions, research institutions around the world draw data from, uh, from the DSWD. And, and this is the snapshot that we're seeing. So uh, 2020, more than, more than 1.5 people may have been displaced due to both conflict and disaster events. This month, this year, January to February, we're February uh, 7 now, we're already seeing a huge number of, of, of people uh, already displaced uh, due to various uh, reasons from disaster induced to conflict induced. And if you, you can see in the slides, uh, the, the, the experience, the, the, the events are happening 
in a in a in a very scattered uh, area. But I think many of the these events now, this is just the uh, uh, displacement events had been going on in Mindanao, particularly in Davao City, Sambuanga, the Nagat Islands, Rigal del Norte, and uh, uh, due to disaster and then uh, on conflict, uh, we, ca we can see that across uh, across the, 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 the region as well, uh, including an encounter between uh, a displacement due to encounter between the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters uh, and government security forces uh, starting late last year, December, but the displacement went on uh, up to around around early uh, last month. Uh, so um, this is early, early months uh, of, of, of 2021, and we are already seeing uh, this uh, stark uh, figures. Um, now, uh, as, as you can see in the video, um, uh, one of the one of the barangay leaders, uh, one of the of the women had been crying out of the complexity of, of the, their experience in a tiny village. Uh, and, and part of the complexity is the, the health emergency, COVID-19 for one. Uh, but health emergency seems to be, to be part of uh, the complexity of displacement uh, events. In, in, in 2019 and then even far back uh, in 2019, there had always been several other uh, health-related emergencies within the bigger emergencies of displacement. Uh, today, COVID-19 is being highlighted because it's a global problem, but there are other, other health um, uh, issues uh, within the displacement context. Uh, in, in 2019, as documented by, by OCHA, uh, the United Nations um, uh, body that, that, that uh, coordinates uh, humanitarian actions, uh, they, they, they noted, they, they documented that cases of missiles, dengue, and polio had also been happening in, in, in the evacuation centers and other contexts of displacements. Uh, you, you know that the total for the Philippines on, on COVID-19 cases, and it, it's a double burden or triple burden when these cases get to spread uh, in, 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 in a displacement context, not only because of COVID, but, but also because of many other possible health uh, uh, concerns or problems within that experience. Uh, so what, what we're seeing is, actually the, the heightening of vulnerability, uh, increasing vulnerability uh, on uh, um, experienced by people affected by, by conflict. And the way that I'm seeing it, um, studying all of this, this, this patterns of displacement, if you unpack um, uh, the, the, the characteristic of conflict and, and um, disaster-induced displacement, uh, you, could, you could see like an overlaps of, 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 this, of these experiences that, that that translates into an intersection of vulnerability. Uh, people can be both the victim or, or thrice a victim of earthquake, floods, or even droughts uh, all at the same time. And then also armed conflicts all at the same time and also epidemics all at the same time. They, they do overlap and it becomes uh, uh, really difficult uh, for, for not only for government, but, but, but for people uh, to, to, to manage uh, this uh, overlapping or intersecting experiences of uh, vulnerability. So in a sense, uh, nationwide probably, but, but more so in Mindanao, uh, that, that might be the feature, the characteristic and complications of, of the displacement experience uh, in the country. Um, that feature or that complication uh, is magnified by the fact that uh, displacements are often happening and it's recurring. And, and I would bet um, in the, the video that we've seen um, just, just a few minutes ago, is that, that that may not be the first displacement experience by those people who had been uh, pushed into the evacuation center. Uh, and, and this is the, the experience across uh, many other hinterland uh, areas uh, in, in, in the region. Uh, and, the, and, and there seemed to be a, a, a shift uh, in, in a sense, in in in, in the displacement experience, um, in the context, or, or in a sense that uh, many of the displacement that we are also seeing now, the large figures that we are seeing, both in conflict and disaster induced, are happening in the urban areas. That might be probably uh, due to uh, increasing movement of rural population to urban areas. So the the, the implication of this is that. Um, the, the, the pattern of displacement 
may complicate beyond our understanding of displacement early on, uh, which is largely uh, rural experience. Now, it, 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 it has become both a rural and urban experience and, and it complicates as, as it becomes uh, uh, as that. Uh, one of the complications is the, uh, the, the question of home and the question of, of, of settlements. And, and that, that, that question or, or, the, or, or the lack probably of, of opportunities to go home and the lack of opportunities to get resettled uh, increases the, the exposure uh, to vulnerability of, of, of people who are being displaced. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in, in, in the next few slides. Uh, but, but, but having said this, it is not that there wasn't any response uh, being done by, 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 by the government, by, by the Philippine society, and uh, by the civil society in all of this experience. In fact, there were a number of responses and there were a number of, of attempts uh, for, for recovery. Uh, there are uh, currently, it seems that the government had, had um, in a sense, improved its quick response uh, operations by prepositioning uh, resources and anticipating uh, disaster, especially the, con the, the, the disaster-induced uh, displacement. But the problem is that um, Complex uh, recovery issues, how to recover from disaster is really very complex. And even, even the matter of, 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 of quick response. Uh, one, 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 one feature or one nature of, of, of its uh, complexity is that much of the aid, the assistance, uh, and, and, and the responses uh, to, 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 to displacement uh, across the country is, is fragmented. Uh, and, and, and there had been a significant problem uh, on the question of whether people can actually return to return back to their home where where, where they were before displacement, there, there were people who were able to return, but there were a number a bigger a bigger uh, increasing problem uh, on the questions of return, and and, and that adds on uh, into uh, issues of, of vulnerability. So, um, in in some, what I'm saying is that. Um, there are key issues with regards to displacement in the Philippines, and, and I'm seeing three, um, three among many. Uh, and, and among these this, this three, three, three key issues are what I would refer to as safety nets issues, health risk issues, and also land tenure issues. Let me delve a little bit on this. Um, safety nets. There had been um, established safety nets in the country uh, uh, thanks to to global um, cooperative uh, actions uh, on this and, and also the proactive uh, engagement of various administrations of, uh, of, the, of the Philippines uh, 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 government or presidencies. Uh, so global protection protocols have been in place in, in, in many parts of the country. And, and this would mean that uh, emergency response are often uh, being coordinated. Uh, and uh, there had been a, a, a direction or there had been a, a consciousness that uh, as part of the response is a recovery uh, recovery engagement and and that recovery is being being seen and, and viewed through the lenses of build back better now build back better is a whole uh, concept uh, there's a global uh, uh, understanding of what we meant by by, by build back better and, and then there's a global uh, global, not really a convention, but but standards that are that are being set in place. But that's also where the problem lies. Uh, so uh, there's there's an understanding for uh, for a protection approach and a build back approach uh, to to addressing uh, displacement. But often uh, this this the efforts towards protection and and, and building back better is. Is at the bare minimum, if at all. Uh, if at all, it's at it's a bare minimum. So there's there's a bare minimum response to uh, housing, livelihood, welfare aid, and and, and social uh, assistance uh, that affects or that that the compromises the possibility of a durable solutions uh, for for people. So so they would never experience any more uh, the, the the suffering that they had experienced. And um, primarily because of the bare uh, minimum um, approach uh, to building back better to the durable solutions, uh, primarily because of that, we keep on seeing the recurrence of the displacement experience. So meaning 
until we are able to to to, to resolve a bare minimum approach uh, to 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 this uh, this this global protocols, uh, we may not see the last of uh, the displacement experience that we have seen in the video that I've shown uh, uh, today uh, as part of the 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 trend that we are now seeing uh, January to uh, February. Um, but all of this is is is, is a manifestation. It's a it's a it's a uh, it's a it's a sign that there's a lack or any decrease of, of safety nets uh, in the country, and and this has to be uh, an, an issue that had to be part of uh, the broader conversation. COVID nineteen is a problem, but probably the 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 experience that that we had uh, in on, on COVID nineteen, the 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 devastation, the damages that that it brought uh, in, is is just a. Uh, is, is, is the manifestation, is the, is the result, is the exposure of this underlying safety nets uh, a problem that had always been around, that had always been there uh, in, in the country. Uh, I, 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 I said about, and I, I pointed about uh, health risk. Um, and epidemiological assessments of displaced communities had always been limited uh, in, ac across the different displacement experience. There had been increasing consciousness of addressing uh, health risk. And I've seen that um, studying and as well as covering the, the Sambuanga displacement experience and also the pre-Sambuanga experience, uh, displacement experience in 2013. Uh, there had been greater consciousness uh, on, on epidemiological assessments in the 2013 uh, event. Uh, but, uh, but, but it would still be, as we can say, a little bit more uh, limited, and, and and probably we can we can we can uh, we can we can illustrate that with the continuing report of um, of exposure to uh, to supposedly uh, addressable um, uh, health cases like dengue, polio, uh, missiles, which which can be prevented. They are all preventable, but they do happen in a displacement um, uh, context. Why? Partly and, and, and probably uh, uh, largely, uh, it, it may have something to do with the overstretch and overwhelmed local medical uh, resources. Without the displacement experience, without the emergencies, uh, our local health units, the, the rural health units, uh, city health units are already strained under the buckle uh, and, and already under pressures, uh, pressured as they are. And, and, and you add on emergency in that experience, then uh, we would have uh, the kind of disasters that we are seeing now. So a disaster would be a multiple experience of disaster because uh, our, our health infrastructure, our health resources are not really ready uh, to, to, to respond to, to, to normal non-disaster non events and then if you add the disaster into the mix, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Uh, lastly, uh, in the, 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 the three areas, the three features of problems that I, I, I pointed early on, uh, one, one significant uh, um, dimension of vulnerability is land tenure. And, and, and that has something to do with, with the lack of, the lack of um, well, property issues or the lack of access to, to, to properties. And uh, the problem with, 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 with property access is that um, it's, not, it's not that there's no, there's no resources to acquire uh, this property. There is some resources, but it's just that there's not much resources to, or, or property to, 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 be, to be acquired. Um, I, I'll do a very quick study on this on the Sambuanga uh, a presentation on this on the Sambuanga experience and also on the Marawi uh, experience. Uh, what, what I'm saying here is that um, there are lands that you can see, but all of those lands were already restrained by property uh, issues. So it's not just that uh, if government wants to relocate people, they can just relocate people anytime because those lands were already owned by someone else or by something else. Something could be a corporation or a government agency or uh, a, a legal entity uh, uh, for that matter. Uh, so they had to acquire those lands before people can actually be resettled. And, and these experiences are prolonging displacement and uh, as a result of it, increasing people's or displaced people's uh, vulnerability. Um, 
we, we can we can see this in, in two experience of displacement. I'll I'll, I'll go quick uh, on this. Um, I, I had a few case studies on Sambuanga uh, 2013 siege and the uh, Marawi City uh, siege. Uh, this is an area that had been that had been at the center at the heart of the displacement in Sambuanga in 2013. I've been doing fieldwork in this area before the siege. I've, I've, I've been moving around this place. I've, I've uh, gathered friends and, and developed a uh, relationship by people uh, within the community in, in 2010. Uh, and, and that had been part of my PhD dissertation uh, um, at, at the time when I've been doing the research there. Uh, but in 2013, just as I finished my dissertation, uh, this happened. Um, that, that this community that you're seeing, exact spot, have become this. It has all devastated, heartbreaking, heartrending, uh, in a sense. There, they did, they did recover, uh, and, and 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 currently it's now uh, um, houses were already built uh, in that in those places. But it took about two, three years uh, for 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 this recovery to happen. And, and meanwhile, during those period, the one two years uh, wherein people are in the displacement um, uh, experience or in the limbo. Um, it, it's, these are all lost years. Uh, students are not able to study well. Um, um, people are exposed to more vulnerabilities, health, income, and, 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 and hunger. Um, it, 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 they had to go through those, those experiences, primarily because no, this, these lands that, that you, are, you are seeing are all contested lands. They're partly owned by government, but also partly owned by, by some entities. Uh, the government can 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 construct some some houses in some parts of these lands, but not all parts of that of those lands. And and um, I think there's a there's a there's a law that that stops government from constructing any buildings, uh, any any houses, uh, if if the land tenure, uh, if the property uh, relations are not secured, are not are not legal. So. The government cannot build lands there until they really secure uh, the, the the tenure uh, relation. So, uh, and 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 this is this is this this place, uh, the place that I was I was uh, showing, uh, has been has already been a sanctuary for people who had been displaced in the 1970s war, in the 1980s war, uh, and in the recurrent conflicts in other parts of Sambuanga and also in Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi uh, in, in, in the last 20, 30 years. So uh, fed up of the displacements uh, that they had experienced in those areas, they moved to this place only to be displaced uh, in 2013 and, and exposed to vulnerability uh, in, in the reconstruction experience. So I'll, I'll just go quickly to, to, to the Marawi experience. Uh, uh, we all know the scale of the Marawi experience, many of us would know. Uh, but um, this is this is what is what is striking, uh, what is what is startling in a sense. Um, so the displacement in Marawi or the virus in Marawi has displaced uh, over twenty one thousand two hundred families, which translates to um, one hundred twenty seven thousand uh, uh, families in the most affected areas. Of course, across Marawi, it would the number would have been uh, uh, greater, about half a million uh, people. But at, but at least the, the area that is mostly affected, uh, we're talking of 127,000 people being displaced. So that's that's a total of, uh, that, that translates to around 21,200 families. Now, the, the permanent housing projects being earmarked for, uh, uh, for, for, for this area is just 4,100. Uh, uh, units, and, uh, and and these are typical housing housing projects. Well, in, at least in Marawi, it's a two floor project that theoretically could only accommodate one family. Uh, theoretically, because that's how that's how uh, engineering design has been has been conceptualized. I think that's how the law has also been 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 crafted, like uh, one house for one family. But but we we do know that. That not only culturally, that that's um, um, not only not, uh, across the Philippines, not only the Maranao in the in the area had extended families, but but people around the country too have extended families. One household can have multiple families uh, in it, and, and all the more so in, in in Marawi. But but more than that, more than the cultural angle, just just look at the the uh, the the plan. Twenty one thousand two hundred families displaced, but only four thousand one hundred housing being being offered. So around 16,000 families do not have 
housing and it's not clear uh, what's the fate of their housing. We're not talking of extended families here yet uh, in this in these numbers. We're just talking of who can what uh, one number of uh, one 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 family accessing uh, one. Uh, one, one, one housing. So it's a one and one uh, ratio, so to speak. Uh, so that, that results to a problem of return. And, and, and frankly, there seems to be really no prospect, at least immediate prospect of return uh, to the most affected zones. Uh, for one, there are no housing plans uh, in this area. Housing plans are located elsewhere. The 4,100 units that I noted uh, um, earlier uh, is... Uh, will be built in, in other places, not in the most affected uh, zones. So uh, I think there had been advocacy that, 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 that had been, uh, that had been uh, fighting for or asserting the return of people in, 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 in the areas that were affected by the conflict, but it's not really in the, in the, in the horizon. It's not in, in the plan. So it, there, there may not be a chance for these people to actually return um, if, if, the legal process would, would 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 be followed because it's not in the plan, it's not in the count, it's not in the budget, it's it's not, it's 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 nowhere. Um, I, I I read the 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 Bangun Marawi plan. The plan is to move people elsewhere, and and there's another plan for 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 the area. So this is this is Marawi. Um, the that's the most affected area, the Dansalan uh, that that you can see on the screen, and, and the other parts of Marawi uh, is the Bangun uh, uh, district where City Hall is, and of course other communities are as well. But um, but the, the 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 complication here is that a significant number of the Marawi population is in Dansalan, and 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 the complexity of of that relation is there has not been a more rational uh, uh, or rationalized um, actions on, on, on property, uh, property, property engagements or property uh, relations. Uh, the, the, the area grew from the 1900s, uh, the time that it was established by U.S. colonial forces in 1907, into, into what it is now, not through the rationalization of property relations, uh, or, or property issues, but but it it just grew uh, because of cultural, social, and and uh, and and also political, uh, uh, shall we say, accommodations that 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 comes that that comes in as part of the broader culture and experiences of of, of the area through the years. So, tenure relations has never been has never been seen, in fact, as problematic, and has there there wasn't much of an effort to to address it. So, given that, uh, with our loss, Philippine loss, not not uh, not or, or prohibited uh, from from building uh, in legal areas, then then it becomes a problem to, to actually build in these areas. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm nearing my end. Um, I'm 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 uh, I, I will conclude this. Um, but but I'm, I'm I'm just I'm just highlighting that we might be seeing a more of a permanent permanency of displacement among many of those who were displaced in, in Marawi. Not, not, not all, but, but many of them may yet, be see, may yet be seeing a life of permanent uh, displacement. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and this, is, this, this problem is not just, it's not just a problem that is, that is true to Marawi. It's a problem in, in many parts of, of the country. It, is, it was a problem uh, in, and continues to be a problem in the, the Davao North Catabato earthquake experience. And uh, it's, it was the problem in the Yolanda, Yolanda issues, and it would be a problem um, in the in, in the in the years to come because there are there seems to be no mechanism uh, around this, this this area, and uh, uh, it would be a problem of planning. It would be a problem of, of procurement, positions, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, then what now? Let me just conclude with this. Um, I think it might be important for us to begin thinking uh, of, of, of how uh, policy intervention and probably even um, uh, understanding or studies uh, of, of all of these relations can actually be, be, be thought about. And uh, one of the areas that, that would probably need uh, um, attention if we would want to resolve vulnerability issues that I was talking about is the area of property relations. And, and, and alongside that, we were um, in, in the context of that, uh, of that uh, problem, we may have to, to think about uh, a better understanding of the risk and vulnerability being faced by people 
uh, at the social, political, biological, and, and geophysical uh, dimensions of, 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 of these experiences alongside property issues. And, and the displacement issues and the, the problems that I've been saying now should be, should be uh, uh, electoral political issues. In the past few elections, I think not one presidential aspirant had been, had been questioned about the displacement, displacement experience and the vulnerabilities that it has brought forth uh, and, and the continuing problems that, that it, had, it had been uh, uh, that, that we are seeing in the displacement experience. So these are just my thoughts. Uh, in relation to the video and probably in the, the, the broader discussions that we would have today. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like now to zoom in on uh, uh, South Upi, what's happening in South Upi. And I'd like to call our next panelist, uh, Mr. Edward Abilardo, to, to, to give us some insights on what's happening in South Upi. Um, I would like to react no, doon sa video uh, kanina na pinalabas ng um, in the news uh, in relation to the uh, displacement of the non-Moro indigenous peoples in South OP Maguindanao. So, um, uh, katulad nga no, ng panawagan nila, um, nagtataka kung bakit uh, patuloy no, no, pagtaas ng um, displacement, katulad ng na-present in kanina, in the non-more indigenous peoples communities in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region Muslim in Mindanao. So as a youth, um, I bring the voice of the youth that uh, there are many youth and children who are affected drastically in this displacement. So um, if you could uh, track no, the uh, record, there are uh, youth who were killed, uh, shoot and killed, no, so and uh, recently a uh, victim of a recent bombing in South Uti Maguindanao. And prior to that, there are also many incidents uh, in South Uti Maguindanao. Uh, uh, if we observe, no, not just in actually in Itao, South Uti. So I believe the video was uh, concentrated, no, in uh, South Uti uh barangay itaw displacement but prior to this um there are also displacement no? in um barangay kuya um lamud and then the other um ages and uh, part no, ng um south of south of the so um in connection to that um um always talagang uh, pinagtataka ng community na sabi nila, ano naman yung kasalanan namin. So, if we are, that is the reason, even the forum, no, raise natin yung um, concern no, ng mga kabataan na sabi natin, um, bakit gano'n? No? So, we have to find a sustainable no, uh, solution on this. Even the community says that, uh, sabi nila, hindi kakayanin ng bigas o dilata noodles yung ganitong pangyayari they really wanted to go back uh, to their uh, to the to the communities um, in order for them you know, to uh, uh, makahanap buhay no so um yun yung always nating pinopoint out and then uh, dito pa ay uh, alam natin so nagkaroon tayo ng ibang proyekto before so we are also encouraging the other uh, youth organization to conduct uh, psychosocial intervention to the affected uh, youth, children, and even to the mothers. No? So, kung, uh, I believe mayroong record din yun, yung aming women's sector doon sa affected na mga uh, kababaihan no? uh, uh, who are directly affected doon sa uh, displacement dito sa South UP. Kaya always natin uh, tinitingnan ay kailangan na natin yung um, uh, sustainable solution no? um, on this um, and then it's a challenge, no? Kung titingnan natin yung pinaka major issues dito, the existing uh, CBFN uh, issued by the previous administration, which is the arm, no? So uh, this must be revisited how they uh, issued the C existing CBFM and the titles um, in South Upi Maguindanao. So uh, because um, in every forum, uh, nakikita natin na sabi ng mga IP. Um, wag bakbakin no kami dito sa usaping titulo dahil malayo naman yun sa aming uh, practices 
So, ang aming titulo, no, kung titingnan natin sa buong South UP, lahat ng mga nakapangalanan na lugar, community sa South UP, Matindanao, ay, ay may uh, karugtong no, ng uh, kultura, tradisyon, practices ng mga non-Moro Indigenous Peoples communities in the uh, Barm region. So, other than that, uh, pinapawagan, pinapanawagan rin natin no, na ito na ay usaping uh, salamat din sa uh, Mindanus dahil uh, patuloy no yung pag uh, expose or paglalabas ng issue in a higher level dahil noon actually nung pumasok yung pandemic ay nasa communities lang ay walang uh, iba no hindi nila gustong pag-usapan uh, hindi hindi nila gustong i-expose yung issue dahil uh, marami daw nagsasabi na threatened sila kapag na-expose yung issue. So, we are glad, no? There are fearless uh, people who tried actually to expose this issue because this must be um, resolved. Um, kung titingnan natin, no, yung uh, displacement ay uh, over, mag, magdadalawang taon na rin yung ibang IP communities sa Barangay Kuya, South OP, Maguindanao. So, um, Other than that, um, always rin nating pinapanawagan na titingnan no, yung produkto ng negosasyon between the uh, MILF government and the GPH, which is the Bangsamoro Organic Law or RA11054, that every implementation such project laws um, shall be um, properly no, um, adhere to the law. So if you could observe, there are also involvement of the uh, combatants who actually declared no, some uh, camps within the ancestral domain, I mean uh, communities, no, within the ancestral domain claim of the Tadurai and Lampangian in South Upi, Maguindanao. So what we are urging is to respect no, and follow, uh, uphold the rule of law no, doon sa... Uh, pagdideclare ng mga community sapagkat malinaw naman sa batas ng uh, Bangsamoro Organic Law ay dapat dinadaan ito sa mga uh, FBI sino yung free prior and informed consent na mayroong consent yung communities sa pagtatag ng mga ganitong uh, uh, communities no uh, sa loob ng ancestral domain sapagkat uh, sinasabi natin kung may uh, ang IP kung mayroon talagang mga armed groups dyan, no? uh, na pumupunta sa communities ay talagang madidisplace yung IP sapagkat malayo sa kultura no? yung uh, pagbibit-bit ng baril uh, pupunta uh, kahit saan. So this can cause a uh, drastic uh, number of um, uh, displaced um, people in our communities. And then um, always rin nating titingnan ay sana Uh, ang BARM government no, ay i-review no, lahat ng mga land titles na nagkapatong-patong na yung claimants. No? Even yung mga IPs ay hindi nila kilala yung mga taong nagkiklaim ng kanilang lupain. That is the reason they wanted to challenge kung sa sabi nila pag mamayari nyo yung mga lupa ay sana uh, ituro ninyo ngayon so, at pangalanan ninyo sino yung mga kapitbahay ninyo. Dahil alam naman ng mga IP kung sino talaga yung uh, totoong kapitbahay nila kumbaga sa sa kanilang communities. So other than that, um sinabi rin no, na raise din ng uh, mga ibang agency katulad ng um uh, uh, GPH no, uh, CCCH, uh, GPH na sabi nila na provocative act no yung pagbibitbit ng baril sa loob uh, ng uh, ancestral domain lalong-lalo na ng uh, indigenous peoples. So always din nating sinasabi na ay um, kung dapat na no natulungan ang indigenous communities doon sa usaping ancestral domain ay dapat no na junk na yung uh, resolution 38 na inaprobahan no, ng parliament because it can actually create more conflict in the ground so it can actually create more um, confusion for the people if this is Uh, if this uh, government is for us, uh, for the people of the Bangsamoro, or for an uh, for uh, for exclusive organization, lang so um, yun yung always nating panawagan na 
uh, bakit no nagkaroon pa ng cease and desist order ang uh, ang farm government sapagkat pwede naman itong pag-usapan uh, between the claimant since meron tayong uh, transition no na tin, uh, na tinitingnan so always nilang sinasabi din na iakyat na to sa usaping IGR or internal uh, relations or internal intergovernmental relations so Makikita din namin na uh, sabi nila sobrang malaki daw yung claimants. Uh, I mean sobrang malaki no yung uh, number ng ancestral domain claim which in fact um, sinasabi pa ay hindi da- da- daw ito dumaan sa proseso. Pero kung titingnan mo prior to the establishment of BARM, uh, we actually applied no under uh, doon sa sa NCIP dahil walang uh, kakayahan noon ang armed government to issue a CAT, no, in the um, in the uh, delineation of the ancestral domain uh, in uh, South Ubi. I mean, in the um, uh, call this in the uh, province of Maguindanao. And uh, tiniting nandi natin, no, yung ang um, farm government ay sana no may i- sa ibatas na nung no, tinatawag nating IP code para mayroon nang basehan din yung pag-iissue nila no ng ng um, ng resolution sapagkat ang nabibigatan yung tao sabi nila 80% ay uh, 80% no ay pagmamayari daw ng Tenduray Lambangian sa sa province of Maguindanao it's hindi naman yung totoo by numbers kung titingnan natin ito ay isang parameter lamang pero kung titingnan mo na nandoon ka na sa process at aalisin mo yung lahat ng mga title ay ang um, mangyayari talaga nito ay uh, siguro um, mahirap na abutin no, kung aabot tayo ng ano uh, 50 or 500 hectares So, yun yung always nating pinopoint out na dapat i-review ng mas maayos at bago ipasa yung mga batas na ito dahil malinaw naman ano yung de- development, ano mang batas na uh, i-approve para sa mga katutubong mamamayan sa loob ng uh, Bangsa Moro ay dapat nandoon sa proseso. So, i-always din natin kinokorek no, na yung iba, sabi nila, ay senior cut daw yung process sabi sa um, kaya ulit din nating tinitingnan sabi natin ano which part no ng shortcut in fact ang na shortcut yung pag-approve ng agenda yung resolution ay hindi pinatawag no yung mga claimants subalit ito ay biglang inaprubahan ito ay nakakagulat na usapin sapagkat ito ay malinaw na pagyurak sa karapatan ng indigenous peoples sa loob ng Bangsamoro that is the reason kung titingnan natin yung point of view ng mga katutubong mamamayan, yung mga non-Moro IP, uh, except siguro doon sa mga Islamized indigenous peoples, ay uh, yung extension, no dapat malinaw din sa kanila yung framework ng extension. Kung ito ba ay political, uh, transitional, dapat may malinaw din. Sapagkat um, hindi kami makademand ng accountability ng mga taong nakaupo, example, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, sapagkat it, they are just appointed. So kung magkakaroon siguro ng uh, proper election no, sa loob ng BARM, ay magkakaroon kami ng pagdedemand ng accountability sapagkat yung mga nakaupo is they own, no, uh, their... Uh, they, Uh, mayroon silang ano accountability sa mga tao. At the same time, always din nating uh, sinasabi na sinusuportahan naman natin yung uh, transition o transition sabi nila na COVID at mayroong uh, transitional process, yung mayroong decommissioning, pwede naman din sigurang i-continue yan sapagkat uh, even other administration sapagkat uh, kung magkaroon ng proper framing So ngayon, kung titingnan natin, almost 100% of the uh, parliamentary countries ay wala hindi nagkaroon ng suspension despite of COVID-19, no? So mayroon pang mahaba-habang time ang uh, government of the day which is the led by the MILF ang ang pagpasa no ng tinatawag nating electoral code sapagkat ito ay mahalaga uh, mahalagang uh, usapin, no? so that we could really exercise our uh, constitutional uh, rights no even um uh, uh the, yung mga tao dito sa farm at the same time ang 
Always nating tinitingnan ay sana i-engage yung lahat ng stakeholders, hindi lang yung ali nung uh, government of the day. So, uh, whether uh, minority, majority, or um, other um, belong to the uh, political clan, they are actually no, uh, a um, one of the stakeholders uh, that can help no, uh, build peace in the ground kapag hindi natin siguro engage at tingin natin sa kanila ay kalaban so medyo mahirap yun sa pagdara ng ating um, government so kung uh, sa tingin nila no ganun yung ating posisyon hindi naman tayo anti struggle or anti peace ang dinidemanda natin na malinaw naman yung ating uh, point of view ay nasa um, bangsa more organic law sapagkat yung basis ng pagdedemand natin ng election ay naaayon no sa tinanggap ng Bangsamoro uh, MILF at ng uh, Philippine government the time that they signed no the uh, ratified no the especially ratified by the people the uh, Bangsamoro organic law so kailangan natin no i-exercise yung ating um, constitutional rights and always nating sinasabi na um oo yung pagboboto ay legitimacy no no a uh, legitimacy ng demokrasya sapagkat at uh, kung makikita natin ay um, dito nakakapili yung mga tao na tamang magrerepresenta sa kanila so yun yung always nating tinitingnan ay sana na no matapos na yung kaguluhan sa loob ng uh, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region Muslim in Binanao lalong-lalo na no doon sa mga non-Moro indigenous communities sapagkat ngayon no patuloy no yung pagdami ng mga uh, newcomers sa uh, nan moro indigenous communities kung patuloy ito na hindi matitingnan no ng ating uh, namamahala ay uh, baka no ang mga IP ay magiging uh, uh, slave na lang no sa kanilang uh, lupaing ninuno nakikita naman natin yung efforts din ng security sector na ini-try nila no mag-formulate ng mekanismo pero ang tinitingnan natin dito ay yung sustainable talaga na manormalize yung communities. So ang pagsusunog ng bahay sa mga komun- komunidad, pagdi-displace no ng mga kabataan, ang mga bata ay nagdudulot ito ng uh, malaking trauma sa mga uh, sa mga katulad namin sapagkat ito ay ang um, ito ay parang nakikita naming danger na no kung at the same time uh, sana na hindi sana no personally yung mga ibang statement na lumalabas sapagkat uh, ito lang no yung basehan natin yung issue ng mga tao at uh, issue ng um, issue ng uh, ng ng tao ng komunidad at mayroon basehan yung issue natin we experience online uh, character assassination I myself personally na nanggaling sa na mga nakaupo ngayon so sana hindi natin ganoon titingnan no yung kritisismo sapagkat yung kritisismo ay tumutulong ito no sa pag-improve at pag-attain ng ng kapayapaan sa loob ng bangsa Moro at titigil na no yung mga uh, pag-atake sa boses ng kabataan dahil nakakapangamba din kung walang nagsasalita para sa mga non-Moro indigenous peoples community communities. At isa dito ay uh, yung um, yung uh, delineation no ng ng uh, nagawa na ng ng NCIP ay dapat kikilala na ng MIPA at hindi pa mag-create ng another uh, organization no uh, sinasabi dito ay mag uh, ang delineation ay magmula doon sa organization sapagkat hindi ang mag ang uh, actually yung gagawa ng proseso ay hindi manggaling sa organization so balit ito ay magmumula sa indigenous people's political structure na indigenous na pamamahalaan pamamahala ng government. So ito ay dapat ay kinikreate ng mga tao, uh, kinikreate uh, hindi nang nang mayroong kapangyarihan para sa uh, gamitin sa sarili niyang kakayahan. Sa, at pinapanawagan din no yung mga ating national government agencies na tumulong sa pagtingin sa mga uh, issue ng non-Moro indigenous communities lalong lalo na no apektado no yung mga kabataan, kababaihan at uh, mga bata sa sa komunidad. So um, yun lang po yung reaction ko regarding doon sa video at ang ongoing press uh, pressing issues 
sa loob ng uh, Bangsamoro, lalong-lalo na sa Nanmoro IP uh, communities. Maraming salamat po. Uh, we will go to the a question and answer. Uh, can we go uh, on to Maria Carmen Gatmaitan? I'm just curious. Thank you, Ami. Okay, okay. I'm just curious go about ahead. this and this is order. If somebody can clarify or give more details about it, we'll appreciate. Thank you. Based on the uh, subject, uh, the system order actually is a resolution approved uh, by the member of the parliament uh, protesting the delineation Uh, process in Maguindano province urging the National Commission of Indigenous People to cease and decrease the delineation process and proceeding for the issue once of the certificate of the ancestral domain in the province of Maguindano, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, Muslim in Maguindano. That was actually approved last 2019 of October. I'm not particular with the, with the, with the date. So, um, technically, actually, ma'am, meron siyang, um, uh, tawag nito yung, um, ongoing, supposedly, a process na yung issue one of the, um, CAD CCD, sa Duray and Lambang, and it's a unified claim. So, um, uh, in connection to that, nung nagtaroon bigla ng bar, no, um, by 2019, uh, parang bigla, no, in-issue yung Resolution 38. In fact, nung no, nag-participate uh, tayo sa ibang usapin, what is their stand, no, why they issued this uh, Resolution 38. So, uh, they said, no, oh, parang, uh, I know, I well, got, uh, I just misunderstood. All along, I thought kasi, it was a cease and desist order about the ongoing conflict but not the ancestral domain delineation. So, yeah. Yeah, so, it, so the cease and desist order is actually about the delineation, no? Yeah, I, I followed that. I knew about the but I will give for the clarification. So, in other words, there is nothing being done to, to address the root cause of the conflict in South OP, except that, as what Ferdinand was saying, uh, the 6ID has already created the source, which is the, um, it's really like a peace course, a task conflict course. resolution task force by the armed forces, no? But what about mechanisms within the Bangsamoro? How are they being mobilized? Because there are existing mechanisms within the Bangsamoro and even within the MILF. So how are these being mobilized to really address this conflict in South Uti? That's what Professor Joel has been saying. This recurrent issue of um, conflict in South Uti. Would, would anyone know if there's any... Well, I guess with um, Minister Nagib na, no? Sana. Pwede, pero wala pa naman siya. He's not here. In, in the room. Edward, would you like to explain further? Um, actually, um, last, last month, uh, January, um, according to the uh, Ministry of Indigenous People Affairs, the Chief Minister um, formulated no, yung uh, parang task force or a finding or the fact finding um, for South Ophi spearheaded by the uh, Ministry of Indigenous People Affairs with the uh, uh, other government agencies. So we are still waiting for the result of that fact finding. And it actually happened. The fact finding was actually conducted. Correct? Yes. Yes. So we just yes. The results. And the results will come out soon and will be issued by the Ministry on IT Affairs. Yung we do not know the, the, the process, but still at Gurung Head. So we are expecting that the output shall be coming from that ministry. Are you familiar who participated the composition of the fact-finding team? I was one of the uh, youth who was interviewed during the fact-finding. It was composed of the Bangsamoro uh, Women Commission, the... Um, 
uh, Bank Tomorrow Human Rights uh, Commission, the MIPA, of course, the, uh, MS, uh, the MSSB, and I don't know the other organization, uh, but that is the composition. Maybe we ask... Um... <coughs> Bong Fenis, uh, because uh, he has a, a comment here, so may we ask Bong Fenis to further to explain to us further uh, his point on the Timoy justice and governance. Mula po sa Mindanao People's Peace Movement, no. Ana uh, na papansin kasi natin, no, na mukang Ando naman yung mekanismo sabi nga ni, ni Ma'am Carmen bago lang na may mga mekanismo na dapat tumutugon dito no. Okay. Uh, where in fact itong South OP ay magdadalawang taon na yung kasi hindi lang itaw no. Ang itaw ay sa tingin namin napansin lang ang itaw or napansin itong dislokasyon sa South OP na tumawag ng atensyon ng mga ahensya ng kaga- ng uh, pamahalaan dahil nga na encounter na ng mga sinasabing lowest elements ang mismong detachment na nasa Itaw. Kasi prior to this mga nitong Itaw incident, may nangyari sa Kuya, may nangyari na sa Pandan, sa Pilar. Kaya sa sa tingin natin uh, talaga nga bang functional ang mga mekanismo na parehong in in place ng gobyerno at ng more Islamic Liberation Front or yung pros- nung mismong peace process. Kasi nga nakikita natin dito na sasagasaan ng mga mekanismong pangkapayapaan or napapag-iwanan ng mga mekanismong pangkapayapaan na hindi natin alam functional ba or hindi or sinasadya. Kaya nasasabi ko dito sa comment ko, wala bang implikasyon yung nagdeklara na mayroong kampo sa South OP na hindi man lang nakausap ang Uh, team wide justice and governance or yung mga tribo no yung Tidoray at Lambangian uh, biglang nagkaroon ng kampo ngayon under sa prosesong pangkapayapaan mayroong normalisasyon diyan mayroong camp transformation na doon din ipapatupad sa mismong ancestral domain ng mga Tidoray at Lambangian so parang may mga agam-agam kaya nga hindi hindi mo maiwasang may agam-agam Nasasagasaan ba sila nitong sinasabing pangakong kaunlaran at kapayapaan ng bangsa Moro ang ancestral domain? No? So yun yung mga... Kasi nga, wala eh. Kung, kaya nga sa tingin natin, kung hindi siguro na inkwentro ang detachment ng itaw, hindi mapapansin na almost two years na ang itaw ang kuya. no May displacement na sa kuya sa OP. Meron ng previous years. no So... Kaya yun yung tingin ba, hindi ba, wala bang relasyon. Pero sa tingin natin, talagang may relasyon kasi parang nag-declare, no? nag-declare ng kampo sa South OP. So, Pwede okay. mag-follow up kay Bong? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, this okay, is the yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. Ano lang, Bong, pwede paki, um, uh, ano to, elaborate lang ano yung kampo na tinayo what is the nature of the camp and where is it exactly located who established it uh, diniklara siyang camp uh, MILF community uh, dito yun uh, sa uh, parang sa Kuya Banda no? part ng Barangay Kuya uh, uh, baka pwedeng makaano si Edward no Jan Banda may nagdeklare ng camp commun- MILF camp community no so tapos parang Uh, binahagi para naging diniklara din ka, parte ng Camp Bader Bayan, no? Camp Bader or Camp Omar. Basta o, o, one of those camps na kasama dun sa ita transform na kasama dun sa peace process. Uh-huh. Okay. So parang uh, yeah, part kasi meron man talagang na-identify yung recognized MILF camps na kasama sa normalization process. So what you're saying is na extend yung initially identified and agreed upon recognize MILF camps for the transformation under the normalization at na-extend dito sa area na binabanggit mo where the government and the MILF declared an MILF community. Ganun yun, no? Uh, hindi natin masigurado kung kasama ba ang government na nag-declare pero ngayon may tarpaulin doon, may 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 ano, may 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 meron talagang expression na this is an MILF community. Ganun yung... Yeah. So, uh, um, 
Yeah, Edward, uh, baka may, may gusto ka idagdag? Toto naman yung sinasabi ni Tim Y, uh, Dato Wata and Sir Bong, uh, regarding going sa camp, na uh, existing sa ancestral domain, which is dalawa yung major camp na uh, considered as borrowed camp. So yung camp father and camp Omar. No, the issue right now, kasi nung pinaliwanag ng OPAP, I think uh, Ma'am Froylin is one of supposedly uh, makaano nito na no, mapamilyar masyado. Uh, mayroon silang parang uh, tatlo, no? mayroon parang um, center, uh, parang influence, um, uh, tawag nito, influence area. So, ang nangyayari kasi dito, ma'am, dapat klaro din sa indigenous people's communities um, kung mayroon bang ganitong pag-uusap. Ang sinasabi naman ng uh, CCH, uh, GPH ay wala dapat ganun dahil malinaw sabi niya dapat kung mag-visit kayo ng mga arm no mga arma sa loob ng uh, ancestral domain na hindi parte ng kampo ninyo ay considered as provocative act so ngayon may mga report na silang natatanggap so when this uh, shall no implemented yung kanilang intervention uh, yung mga provocative act in fact nagki-create no yung mga command ng MILF ng mga uh, sarili nilang rules and regulations sa community. Halimbawa, no, yung sabi nilang uh, pag nahuli kang maglasing, uh, uh, pamumultahin ka ng abot ng uh, 12 at ayun o 20,000 kapag wala kang pambayad lupa. Kapag wala kang pambayad sa lupa, ang magiging ano mo, yung asawa mo. So, malinaw yan, nakuhaan din ng mga picture, no, ng ating mga uh, tao sa ground, yung uh, ganun, no. So, ngayon, ang community, hindi ko alam, no, paano uh, nakuha yung mga pag-implement ng mga ganun. So, at the same time, hindi rin malinaw sa IP na ito ba sa part ba ng normalization, the more na may community ka, inonormalize ka dun sa community mo paano kung inagaw mo lang yung uh, yung lupa so inonormalize ka pa rin ba so sana makita din ng OPAP na uh, paano i-verify no itong mga dumating lang na kampo in fact yung katulad sa kampo ni Micro Commander Micro sa South Sofi Magindanao ito ay matagal na nasa uli na yung pera at nagbili lang sa pero hindi sa umalis sapagkat dinakutan niya pa ng maraming tao, nagkuha pa sa, gumawa pa siya ng sarin training ground. So these are uh, considered no, na nakakatakot. So pa, kung papalawakin pa, mag-extend pa yung, yung Bangsa Moro till 2025, nakakatakot para sa mga non-Moro IT community. So, hindi, hindi sila favorable dahil nga doon sa nangyayari sa ground. Yun po yung aming ano. Uh, uh, maybe some other... People would like to ask questions. Meron pa ba dito? Uh, okay, si uh, Bong, Bong Sarmiento of Mindanao. So would you like to say some? I have a question for Edward. Paki-elaborate lang yung call mo kayo na for the BARM, for the BARM government to review the land claimants. Sinabi mo patong-patong na yung mga claimants. Would you know how many claimants are there actually? Um, actually, marami talaga, sir. I can't memorize, but we have actually a data on that. Um, uh, sir, siguro yung tamang ano lang, siguro engagement para maipalabas yung ganito. Even ang local government unit ng South Sufi ay nanilito na sa patong-patong na um, claimant, no, yung mga GSS um, survey na napatisiluhan sa time ng armed government. So, may mga claimant na mula sa Libak Surtan Kudarat, may mga claimant mula sa Talayan, may mga claimant mula uh, out of South Sufi. So, itong mga tao na doon, nung binilify ng community, ay hindi mga tao doon. So, how they come na nakakuha ng mga title? Even, kaya nga, yung LGU ay nalilito na rin. So, um, doon sa ano, kinukol po namin na stop mula yung pag-survey within the ancestral domain. Kasi ngayon, an ongoing yung ibang survey, um, not in South Sufi, pero in um, other places, no? nung uh, AD claim ng IP. So, sabi natin, sana magkaroon muna ng mekanismo yung BARM government, ay hinto muna yung pag-issue, pag-survey, sapagkat kung hindi ito maitigil, no, patuloy ng pag-issue, pag-survey, ay mas lalo pang maglala yung community. In fact, itong dahilan, kung titing rin natin yung isa sa mga dahilan, yung displacement ng itaw ay isang CBFM na na-issue noon ni Secretary Kaharkadkag 
sa um, sa isang uh, ano sa tao din no, dito sa farm. So ngayon, may mga claimant na sabi nila um uh, itong overlapping uh, complaints no ng mga uh, ng mga um tawag nito nung land ay it can cause conflict dahil um yung iba gusto magtanim ng ng nang dito nung palm oil. So ang community ay ayaw naman ng ganito at wala silang ideolohiya nung nung pagtatanim nung mga ganun no. So yun yung basta halo-halong isa sa magpagdating sa overlapping na isa ng land. Yung ano lang palo pa din doon sa sinasabi mo kanina sa iyong sa may kuya yung mga backwits doon mga 2 two, uh, two, two years na Can you confirm I think that? Magto, yes, magto 2 years na po this coming June. So um June uh, May or June na ta. So ganun yung ano niya. So nung una kasi bumaba tayo, um uh, sinalo up natin last year ang lumabas sa report no na is 3 months pa lang sila doon where in fact no nakausap natin yung community sabi ng sir sobra na kami isang taon dito at ngayong taon no magdadalawang taon na sila so da, tama yung sabi sa kanina ni uh, uh, sir Bong kung hindi lang siguro na atake ni yung mga kampo nung uh, military sa uh, uh, itaw ay baka hindi ma-expose din yung issue so kung titingnan mo grabe yung tulong sa itaw na pumunta pero yung ibang displays katulad ng nasa Lamod dati um, sa, sa Kuya ay nandyan pa rin yung mga tao so parang ninanakaw nila na yung pagkatanin ng kanilang mga uh, tanin doon sa lugar May we now call on Minister uh, Nagib Sinarimbo for 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 his you know, um, statement Hi Carol, hi, hi ma'am Hi, hi sir So, so, we'll just share with you yung update so far kung ano na ang mga na, ano nangyayari diyan at saka ano po ang nagawa na diyan sa um, conflict sa South UP. So essentially ang ite-take up ko lang ho ay yung status ng incident sa UP, South UP as of February 5, 2021. Uh, and then yung summary ng mga incidents na yon and then Uh, roughly yung actions taken by the Bank Samoro government. So as of February 5 po, yung internally displaced persons from barangays Itaw, Lamut, and Kuya, uh, hindi pa ho yan nakakabalik sa, sa kanila. Yun naman pong galing ng pandan, uh, umuwi sila pag umaga, pero bumabalik sila sa evacuation centers pag uh, gabi. Ito ho yung uh, incident nung January 23, 2021. Uh, yung Civilian Active Auxiliary Detachment dyan sa may Barangay Pandan, South UP, hinarasto ng mga quote-unquote unidentified armed men. Uh, nagkaroon ng uh, damage dito. Yung isang unit ng bulldozer na owned by the municipal government of South UP. Isang sari-sari store din sa Sityo Masagana at isang uh, fiberglass dyan sa Istornino Resort in Sityo Balogo. Ito yung mga na-damage dun sa harassment na yun. And then yung harassment displays a total of 285 families. 899 na individuals so yan. From Sityo Masagana, Panangbira, uh, part ko ng Poblacion Dos yan. Uh, January 3, uh, yung around 2 p.m., yung convoy ho ni South UP Mayor uh, Insular together with some members of the Sangunian Bayan Municipal DRRMO, uh, health workers of the Rural Health Unit, aretsyo ng South UP, tsaka Philippine National Police ay allegedly in ambush o kaya hinaras um, uh, through an IED at the provincial road in Sitio Panang, Barangay Pandan, Huyan, South Upi, Maguindanao. Um, yung uh, site ng incident was roughly around 400 meters away from the CAA detachment, yung detachment ng mga doon. Yung ambush na yan resulted in the death of one individual, pati injuries sa apat, as well as damages to vehicles and the displacement of around 560 families who advised to return home the following day, noong January 14th. 
December 31 ho, noong 2020 at around 11.20 p.m., may harassment din ng unidentified armed group uh, sa Sitio Manguda, Barangay Itaw. Uh, nagkaroon ho ng displacement rito noong around 310 families in Sitio Manguda and the other families in the nearby sitios. Ang total ho niyan ay 599 yung affected families. And the burning ng 13 houses. Uh, at saka yung palay na harvest nila sa Sitio Manguda. Around nung December 2, uh, around 11.45 p.m., an identified armed groups harassed the patrol base of Delta Company nung 57th uh, Infantry Battalion, Philippine Army, sa Barangay Itaw, South Tupi. 258 families from Sitios Gati, Manguda, and Salay were displaced. 52 families from Sitio Two lovers opted to temporarily move to their relatives in the population. So, may displacement din ho niyan. Uh, so far, ang meron uh, doon sa humanitarian side na action taken by the regional government, yung MSSD nag-distribute na ho ng uh, food packs at saka iba pang food items noong December 10. Noong December 16, Yung Ministry of the Indigenous Peoples Affairs, nag-distribute din sila ng food packs. Uh, kasama ho yung office ni uh, MP Romeo Saliga. Nung January 6, uh, nag-distribute din ho yung Rapid Emergency Action on Disaster Incidents uh, ng food packs, pati mga hygiene kits. Uh, yung MSSD, sumabay sa amin, nag-distribute sila ng mga sleeping kits, water jugs, at saka... Mga trapal, ito yung complain ng mga tao na nauladan sila. Because of the incidents in South UP, nag-create ho nung special task force dyan para ho magkaroon ng fact-finding mission. Uh, at ang committee, uh, yung task force na yun, is headed by the Ministry of the Indigenous Peoples Affairs para i-identify yung root cause of the controversy involving yung indigenous peoples in the different barangays in the municipality of South Tupi by means of data gathering to the conduct of interview of the different concerned sectors. So nagkaroon ho ng fact-finding mission na dyan. Yung committee na yon ay uh, na-expand siya uh, after the cabinet meeting uh, dahil uh, may feedback from MIPA na kasama dun sa mga issues ay uh, lupa, land conflict, uh, may problema din doon sa governance at the level of the barangay Kaya ho nasali yung Ang instruction ni Chief Minister ay isali yung mga ibang ministries Na may concern noon sa mga underlying issues So nasama ho yung ministry namin, yung MILG And then yung MENRI para ma-address natin yung lupa uh, And then dahil may mga allegations ng human rights violations Yung Bangsamoro Human Rights Commission, SINAMA uh, And then May attempt to settle yung mga rido dyan, kaya ho sinama din yung uh, MPOS, yung Public Order and Safety. Uh, and then yung special concerns ng women, uh, sumama ho ang BWC o yung Bangsamoro Women Commission. And then may mga lawyers from the Attorney General's Office. Noong January 12, 2020, the Fact-Finding Committee, um, nagkaroon ng uh, pag-uusap dun sa... Uh, elementary school sa South UP uh, at nagkaroon sila ng interview ng mga tao na affected ng uh, conflict dyan. So may mga na-interview na sila. Among the persons they have interviewed are those coming from the following sectors. Yung local government officials and the uh, members of the Sangunian. Yung chair ho ng Barangay Itaw, Pilar at Sakapandan. Yung tribal leaders representative of Barangay Itaw, Pilar and Pandan, affected families of Barangay Itaw, Pilar and Pandan, um, yung mayor's council representative, uh, yung Balay Kitab, and then yung Philippine National Police, Armed Forces of the Philippines, at saka yung CAFGO personnel na naka-assign doon sa mga areas na yun. Uh, may mga representatives din coming from uh, the youth and the women sector. Yung part ng uh, findings na initial ng fact-finding committee ay uh, isa sa mga underlying issues doon ay yung issue ng lupa. Uh, uh, pangalawa ho ay merong 
um, intrusion ng mga tao from Sultan Kudarat and South Cotabato na side. Uh, meron ding occasional na uh, entry ng uh, CPP NPA coming from South Cotabato and North Cotabato. Um, and then, ang uh, latest dyan ay yung pinapursue na mga BIFF sa SPMS box ay umakyat din sa South UP. Uh, in fact, yung ambush kay Mayor ay inown na ng BIFF na sila yung gumawa. Uh, merong kaming kausap from the BIFF na tinanong namin bakit sila umakyat dyan at bakit merong uh, operation yung grupo nila dyan na traditionally wala naman. Ang sagot nila sa amin ay merong um, may Mer- merong attempt na i-displace yung mga Maguindanaons dyan using the CAFGU uh, dyan sa South UP. Kaya daw ho nagre-respond sila sa call naman ng mga Maguindanaons. So apparently nagkakaroon ng uh, kampi-kampihan dyan sa UP. Ito ho yung nagiging cost talaga ng uh, displacements dyan sa South UP. So um, hindi lang... Uh, lupa kundi nabubuhay yung mga dati ng alitan dyan na, na, uh, but, but essentially tungkol dun sa ownership ng mga lupa dyan sa South UP It, Ito yung talagang major challenge dyan sa South UP Marami hong sumasakay so nagiging added layer dun sa problema natin Okay um, Sir, there are uh... Three questions here. Uh, first, from Carmen Gatmaitan. Uh, sabi niya, has there been any effort by authorities, uh, security forces, to confirm the identities of the unidentified armed men? Uh, what are the findings so far? Merong parallel na police action dyan uh, dun sa, sa allegedly mga armed groups. Uh, umamin yung BIFF, so uh, mukhang sinasali nila dun sa investigation. Ang, ang isang complication ay meron talagang tropa dyan ng MILF. May, may ano naman dyan, may tropa dyan. At ang nagiging challenge natin, may mga, from what I've seen, na dinidevelop nilang kaso, may mga na-include na, na mga MILF personalities doon sa pinapursue na... Uh, Pa, parang nagki-case building yung uh, PNP. Uh, so magiging added complication yan. Kaya yung CCCH is also being invited to come into the picture para ma, ma-address yan. But ang, ang pinaka-urgent sa amin from the regional government's perspective ay mag-stabilize muna yung uh, peace and security dyan. Maski na temporary lamang para matutukan natin yung talagang root causes ng problema. Kasi kung continuing na nag-aaway, uh, mahirap i-resolve yung root causes kasi madadrag tayo ng immediate challenge ng uh, conflict and then the, the consequent uh, displacement ng mga tao. So yun ang attempt. Uh, hindi mo na magkagulo so we have sufficient time to look more deeply into the underlying causes ng conflict. Pwede magtanong, follow yes. up? Oh, sige, yeah. sige, sure. Okay, Later go ahead. What uh, Minister Sinarimbo just mentioned about stabilizing the situation is the increasing deployment of uh, AFP or PNP included in your approach to stabilize the situation? Merong ongoing na coordination sa kanila, uh, yung AFP and the uh, PNP. Uh, ang ang tingin namin meron ding need na merong na ma-increase yung presence ng uh, legitimate forces sa ground para ma-address naman natin yung uh, BIFF intrusion doon sa loob ng uh, South UP. So kaya merong apparently may increase doon sa number of security personnel being deployed in the area. Okay, thank you very much, Minister. Gabong Sarmiento of Mindanus has a question. I said, ito, um, there's a call from a youth group in South UP for the BARM government to review the land claimants in the area. 
Opo, may, may, meron talagang uh, so ang pakiramdam ang ang initial findings ng fact finding committee natin is that isa sa mga major root causes ng problema niyan is land conflict. Uh, um, so titingnan ho talaga kailangan may tutok doon sa issue ng land uh, sa South UP. Uh, and that includes yung uh, reviewing kung uh, Halimbawa, titled land yan, may overlap ba? Kasi may experience na tayo dyan eh, earlier na uh, nag-aaway sila, nagkaroon ng displacement. Uh, ang simple solution lang pala nun ay magkaroon ng resurvey. At nung dinala yung survey doon sa ground, na-found out na hindi naman pala magkapatong yung lupa nila. Uh, magkahiwalay naman pala. Pero both are claiming the same piece of land. Nung sinurvey siya, natuntun yung boundary, magkahiwalay naman pala. So, na ayos ko yun. Uh, but, the the one in Itaw, in Pandan, in Pilar, medyo complex ho ito. Uh, hindi ho ganun kasimple. Uh, so, kailangan ho talagang mas malalim yung uh, pag-approach doon sa settlement ng issue. Kasi, i- hindi ito simple issue ng no, ancestral domain. Eh. Kasi, may mga nagtitulo, uh, and this includes yung mga non-Moro indigenous na the Tedorai. Meron din iba sa kanila na nakatitulo ng lupa pa. Hindi, hindi siya yung uh, kadi ang titulo. Hindi tutuong titulo na na individual uh, Torrens title dun sa mga ano. And then may mga maging nanounce din na nakatitle. Marami ring settlers na nakatitulo ng lupa dyan. So eto ho yung... Uh, and then meron kang, meron kang claim for... Uh, delineation ng ancestral domain by the by the Tedorai yung mga non-Moro indigenous. So ito gan, ganito ka complex yung issue nung lupa diyan sa South Upi. Kailangan ho talaga natin maayos yon. Okay. So si Mr. Datuwata is here. Uh, he has been raising his hand. So sir. Yes, uh, salamat ma'am no. Ma- <laughs> medyo kan lang yung unstable yung connection ko. Okay. Gusto susugatan sa isyu ng lupa yung natama talaga ng may mga uh, individual na hawak na title. So, hindi yun isyu sa amin kasi kung na title na. Ang isyu ngayon, may papasok na may dalang titolo mula, mula sa ibang probinsya, ibang munisipyo, na hindi alam kung saan yung uh, banda, kung saan nakalaga ng titolo, hawak-hawak nila. Kasi yung tinitingnan lang, yung isyu ng DNR, yung GSS or B, na inapplyan nila na bakante daw pero may uh, akpan akupan particular sa barangay kuya mama the barangay kuya poblacion yung barangay site niya is 32 hectare may tatlong tao na may hawak na darating na sabi niya sa akin ito so yan yung problema kasi tinitingnan lang sa taas sa uh, sa mapa doon sa office ng DNR yung mga bakante na puno na walang mga tao pero may mga tao yun aktual na occupant sunod ngayon yung ancestral domain namin delineation ay tapos na submitted last October 2018 doon sa national office ancestral domain office ng NCIP sa ngayon ang problema naman is may cease and desist order in issue ang uh, BTA Dahil nga doon sa malawak daw na ang inaangkin namin na lupa. Pero yung mga land title naman at o mga individual na pag-aari ay maalisin ng uh, uh, NCIP yun bago ma-issue yung kadte. Yung issue naman dyan sa itaw ay gano'n na rin. Lupa na rin dahil una, yun sabi kanina na may clearing operation ng military, tama yun. In fact, ang pinadahilan is... Yung mga uh, engineering batalyo na nagagawa ng kalsada ay may nakikitang mga armado aligid-aligid. So yun yung ginawa na may, ano, may military operation, clearing operation ng military. Tapos yung mga tao naman, mga katutubo, sila yung binintangan na nag sa mga military na nag uh, nag-operate. Siyempre, nandoon yung mga tribal leader kasama yung mga CBO o mga BPATS na nasa area. So, yun yung binintangan na sila ang nag-guide sa kanila. Pero at ang pinaka-main issue dyan is lupa na narin dahil yung mga tao rin dyan ay since time memorial, mga lambangian, mga katribo ko, ma'am, na mm-hmm. nandyan na sila at 
papasukyay ng mga project daw no ilang in fact mm. ilang bisis na sila kinumpronta at pinatawag pepirma ng wave or content na implement yung project na uh, may lawak na 3550 hectares mm. in kahapon kasama ko at nagmeeting yung community kasama yung mga tribal leader at ang liderato ng Timay Justice and Governance yun yung sinasabi na dahil ng uh, natin, bago namatay si Abu Misri as spokesperson ng BIFF namin niya sila yung nagtatak dahil may lupa daw sila doon ng 500 hectares nabasa ko yung articles ninyo ng Minda News ma'am na siya yung may sabi na may lupa sila na 500 hectares sinagaw ng mga Christian daw so yun yung isa sa mga dyan. Bakit paano sila naging magkaroon ng lupa dyan na wala naman in history, walang muro, walang, walang abumisri at wala kaming kilala na mga muro na may pag-aari ng lupa. Pero ngayon lahat ng buong ancestral domain namin, lahat hinawa, may, ang may hawak na titulo ay mga kapatid naming bangsa muro. So yun yung pinaka ano sa amin. Kung susuga natin yung batas ipra, nandiyan nakalagay sa Bangsamoro, or, or, uh, Bangsamoro Organic Law ang reference o basihan ng pagkilala ng mga karapatan ng mga katutubo ay base sa Republic Act 8371. Sunod explicitly sa batas na delineation, eh, delineation of the la ancestral domain of the land o ancestral domain of the non-Moro indigenous people within a Bangsamoro uh, region shall be respected and recognized. At saka do, yung listing identity, yun yung pinagtataka namin. Since natapos uh, na-install yung ball at saka yung implement yung BTA, rampant yung pagpasok uh, ng mga bangkapatid namin na bangsang moro. Na, pag, may mga titulo daw, last week, uh, oh, last, last Tuesday, may isang, how, mayroon naman, mismo sa community ko ma'am, May dala na siyang titulo at pumunta sa barangay, tinatanong kung saan banda yung location ng kanyang hawak na titulo. So yan yung pinaka-crucial ngayon issue dito sa amin, pag-expand o, o pag-declaration ng MILF community sa Kuya. May ang sagot lang sa akin sa minyan is, Kuya is a part of Camp Bader. Kasi nga doon sa ano ng kampo, may ba sityos or barangay, yun yung center. Kung core naman, municipality or municipality siya pin pasok ang south UP at north UP doon sa core territory ng camp doon sa influence naman ba, mo, province or provinces doon yung definition ng camp so ibig sabihin pasok lahat buong ancestral domain do, namin ay nandoon sa core territory at pasok din siya doon sa influence area ng MILF camp so paano yun na nagiging kampo na hindi naman kami membro ng MILF Bakit nasama doon sa kampo yung aming lupain? In fact, ang dalawang kampo ng MILF recognized by MILF noon pa lang pagsimula ng peace negotiation ay sabi namin hindi dapat recognize ito ng kampo ng MILF kasi ito ay ancestral domain ng mga katutubong Tadoray kahit saan na forum, fora at negotiation nakiupo kami sa both TPH panel nakilala ni na ang itong area ay lupain ng mga katutubong taluray at sa kalambangian. Pero hindi talaga pumasok hanggang yun na, ang ginawa namin during sa uh, deliberation ng BBL sa Kongreso at Senate, yun yung hiningi na lang namin na kilalanin yung ancestral domain ng mga katutubo at ang kanilang listing identity doon sa uh, papaloob sa batas na bago ma-approve. So sa awa ng Diyos, napasok yung 13 provision intended for the protection of the right of the indigenous people. Pero dito naman sa actual implementation, wala kaming nakita na para sa mga katutubo, no, maprotektahan yung right ng mga katutubo. Kaya ang posisyon namin, kaya yan yung isa sa mga dahilon bakit lumabas, na ang posisyon namin ay no to extension. Pero kung hindi matuloy, ang, ang opsyon namin is no touching of the Uh, indigenous people's vers uh, sec version or section at mapalitan at maging maproseso kung sino yung upo na maging uh, Ministry of Indigenous 
Sige, me, me, medyo mahaba yun, ha? Uh, I, I, I will try to attempt to simplify yung, uh, yung ano ni sir, ha? Uh, una po siguro na major issue ay yung jurisdiction over the issue of ancestral domain. Uh, is it NCIP or the Bangsamoro government? Ha? Sino ang may jurisdiction doon sa issue ng ancestral domain? Ang 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 nasa peace agreement natin yung natural resources and ancestral domain ay enumerated na power ng Bangsamoro government. Uh, yun ang 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 foundation noon. Uh, so in the peace agreement nakalagay yon na yung may competency over the issue of ancestral domain and natural resources is the Bangsamoro government, hindi yung national government. You find this provision also in Article 10 of the Constitution of the Philippines na yung enumeration ng powers granted the autonomous region in Article 10 nandoon yung natural resources and ancestral domain. So dapat to ang may karapatan noon na mga siwa sa issue na ito ay yung Bangsamoro government. Ang nagiging challenge lang, nagiging problema, yung Region 12 NCIP that is holding office in Coronadal in Region 12 intruded into the territory of the Bangsamoro government and conducted a delineation survey. Uh, so, yun yung pinoprotest ngayon ng Bangsamoro Parliament ng BTA na huwag kayong pumasok dito, NCIP Region 12. Dahil yung jurisdiction over the issue of ancestral domain, including the delineation of that, is a power granted the Bangsamoro government. Hindi ho kayo sa Region 12 na NCIP kasi nasa loob ng teritoryo ng Bangsamoro government. So yun yung uh, pending na conflict. It is a conflict about jurisdiction. Who has the authority and the jurisdiction to delineate and determine ancestral domain? inside the Bangsamoro territory. Uh, so yun yung uh, isa dyan. So yun po yung uh, ano na yun. So hindi po tama na sabihin na ayaw ng Bangsamoro government ang ancestral domain for the indigenous peoples. Uh, uh, may assertion ho talaga na yung indigenous people are entitled to the ancestral domain claim. Uh, yun ho yung unang kailangan nating tandaan. Pangalawa ho, merong uh, merong conflict in the narrative doon sa tinatawag nating indigenous people. Sino ba talaga yung mga indigenous people? Ang assertion ng mga iba, and, and, I, and I hope i-clarify ito ng mga kasama namin, uh, ay yun lang mga non-moro na native dito ang indigenous. So ibig sabihin kami ng mga moro, hindi kami indigenous. <laughs> Ang position ho namin, hindi ho tama yun. Because we are just as indigenous as anybody in the Bangsamoro. In fact, we've shed more blood than any other indigenous people in the Bangsamoro. Kami ho, lumaban ho kami uh, from the very beginning. And we defended that territory. Uh, so, we, we say the Bangsamoro is as much as indigenous as anybody in the Bangsamoro. So entitled who kami noon sa claim for indigeneity in the Bangsamoro. Uh, so whether we are Muslims or we are not, it does not matter. Huh? Pagka ho, tayo yung nandito, ibig sabihin indigenous tayo rito. Yung mga galing sa Luzon, Visayas na nagsettle dito, yun ho ang hindi indigenous. Huh? So it's not about religion. Uh, corollary to that, merong claim yung mga mga nag-Muslim na Tedoray na ang treatment sa kanila ay non-indigenous na sila. And so I'll cite very specific example. Yung mga pamilya ng kampong, kasi si Abu Halil Yahya, who was one of the founding members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, is a Tedoray, is a Tedoray, true-blooded Tedoray. Uh, wala hong halo yung dugo niya. But he was a very senior officer of the Moro Islamic Liberation uh, fra, dahil kasama siya doon sa mga nag-found nung, uh, nung MILF. 
And because of that, yung line nila, yung mga kamag-anak nila, pinsan nila, mga anak nila, mga pamangkin nila, lahat yan am I left. And so it is natural that itong mga tedoray na ito na nag na sumali sa MILF, meron silang mga lupa diyan sa UP. Ito yung ginawa nilang kampo. Uh, so hindi ito mga maginda na lang, uh, so hindi ito mga maginda. Ito ay mga tedoray very native to the place who happens to join the movement uh, part of the senior leadership na kampo sila diyan. So hindi ho mga maginda na nito. Ito ay mga tadoray talaga na 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 part ng leadership ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front. So kaya ho may kampo diyan dahil pamilya din nila ang nandiyan. So ito ho yung kailangan na uh, maintindihan natin. Um papangat, pangatlo na importanteng intindihin natin doon sa si issue ay yung ownership and titling of the land. Hindi lang ho mga Maguindanao ang nag-title diyan. Uh, it, now this is Torrance title ha? Meron din In fact, mas nauna At mas madami Yung mga settler na nagtitulo dyan Sa North UP at saka sa South UP In fact, ang unang naglaging At nagkalbo nung buong bundok sa UP Ay yung mga settlers Galing sa labas uh, So hindi ho tayo Hindi rin ho mga maginda naon Hindi rin ho kayo Pero uh, that's a fact And part of that ay nagpatitulo sila ng mga lupa dyan. Including, unfortunately, the church. Malaki hong lupa dyan ng simbahan sa UP. Uh, so, hindi lang ho ito mga maginda raw. Second, meron din mga tedoray na hindi ancestral domain na ang claim din, din nila. Nagpatitulo na rin ho sila ng mga individual titles ng lupa. Uh, so, yung titles dyan ay hindi lang maginda raw. Hindi lang tedoray. Ay, nilang settlers, all of the above, meron hong titulo dyan. Ah, so, so it's not correct to say the Maguindanaons are titling the lands of the Tedorais in South UP. If you check the records of the titles, you will be surprised. Meron pa hong mga Tagalusod na may titulo dyan. Ah, this is just the same as people in Luzon titling Kampa Bubakar. Ah, so pareho lang ho tayo ng Uh, problema dyan So Yung BARM If you look at If you check the titles Wala pa hong titulong ini-issue ang BARM uh, Nung umupo Yung MENRE So you check the titles now Nung may mga claims dyan Wala pa hong nai-issue yung MENRE Yung Bangsamoro government Kung meron mang nag-issue dyan Yung mga previous na government Hindi ho yung BARM So wala hong koneksyon yung Bangsamoro government in the allegations na ginagamit ng mga Maguindanaon yung Bangsamoro government to get titles to lands in South UP. Hindi ho totoo yun. Uh, wala hong uh, titulo na uh, ini-issue dyan. So, eto ho yung kailangan na malinaw sa atin lahat. So, where is the uh, real problem? I think the problem uh, is one, Meron talagang conflict diyan sa lupa. Uh, so kailangan nating ma-settle 'yon. Pangalawa ho, mayroon tayong challenge dun sa jurisdiction over uh, ancestral domain claims uh, in the Bangsamoro. And that's being uh, discussed in the intergovernmental relations body kasi uh, uh, conscious naman talaga tayo na yung Uh, claim ng NCIP na may pakialam sila doon sa ancestral domain inside the Bangsamoro, talaga hong ide-dispute ng Bangsamoro government yun. Not because we will deny the claim for ancestral domain of non-Moro indigenous peoples, including the Tadorai, but, but because this government is supposed to exercise power and jurisdiction over ancestral domain. So kung may magagrant man ho ng ancestral domain, the application should be filed at the Bangsamoro government's Ministry of the Indigenous People para sila ho yung uh, mag-grant ng ancestral domain sa mga kababayan ho natin na nandito sa Bangsamoro. So yun lang po ang gusto kong medyo malinaw ho sa atin lahat. Mm-hmm. So do you uh, may mga questions pa ba? Follow up Ami on the point by Minister Nagib about 
the IGR as the body resolving the issue of ancestral domain jurisdiction. How is it being resolved now, sir? Is there any update from the IGR body? Meron na joint technical working group na kindre eight dyan, yung uh, IGR ng national at saka yung IGR ng Bangsamoro. So, tentative from the uh, uh, NCIP national uh, is already talking to the MIPA, uh, the Ministry of the Indigenous Peoples in the Bangsamoro. So, meron hong discussion na yan. Uh, and then, hopefully, pag yung mga issues are clarified at may mga hindi na settle, they will formally bring that into the as an agenda in the intergovernmental relations body meeting. Po. Can we ask Mr. Mr. Bong Fenis has a question. Ang sabi dito, kung waiting for awarding na ang ancestral domain claim sa process ng Tiduray and Lambangian sa NCIP process based sa IP Rights Act, sa BARM process ba ang start? I think talaga kung gusto nating magpa uh, mag-claim ng ancestral domain uh, na nasa loob ng Bangsamoro, ang ang recommendation namin ay i-file na yon dito sa Ministry of the Indigenous Peoples uh, dito sa BARM para humatake up na nila yon. Uh, yun po ang recommendation namin. Si Tom Freudlin Mendoza, Executive Director ng Teduray Lambangian Women's Organization is now here. Ma'am, would you like to say uh, something? Hindi ko masyado naabutan yung discussion. Pero yung naabutan ko lang kaya ito yung nag-give yung delineation ba and titling. Oo, yung question ko na lang siguro kay attorney nag-give ay dahil may mechanism na ba yung si Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affair para doon sa pag-issue ng Certificate of Ancestral Domain Title. Considering na yung ating IP code ay hindi ko pa nga alam kung naisa lang na ba siya sa cabinet or ano ba yung mekanismo na tawag doon. Kasi kung may mechanism nga, so ibig sabihin, pwede nang mag-issue ng Certificate of Ancestral Domain Title si MIPA. Pero ang pagkakaalam ko, yung IP code ay hindi pa nga siya na isasalang. So, yun lang yung ano ba yung magiging implication nito. Uh, yun yung unang question ko lang. And then, yung clarification ko lang din siguro kay Atty. Nagib, yung pagtingin naman doon sa non-more indigenous people, pinag-usapan natin ito doon sa discussion natin sa Kuala Lumpur. Uh, dahil nga lahat ay indigenous people at tanggap natin yung lahat, yung Maguindanao, yung Teduray, dahil nga doon sa uh, may kakaiba itong kultura, tradisyon at mga paniniwala uh, patay sa uh, definition ng indigenous people. Uh, yung dahilan ng pagiging non-moro IP, para lang i-qualify, sino pa yung mga iba't ibang tao sa loob ng bangsa moro? Dahil lahat nga indigenous people. Kasi ganito yung magiging implication nyo. Pag lahat indigenous people, so ibig sabihin, kahit yung mga teduray, pwede yung i-represent ni Magindanaon pag hindi mo nyo kin 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 qualify Kaya nga yung sabi ng panel noon, ano yung magiging qualification para dito? Para ma-represented yung unrepresented doon sa structure ni Bangsamoro government. So yun yung discussion doon. Kaya si non-more indigenous people, ang definition niyan, sila si Taduray, Lambangian, Bulangan, Manobo, Higaonon at Blaan. Kasi ito lang yung mga non-moro IP na ngayon ay naandito sa BARMM. So yun yun. So hindi natin pwedeng dalahin yung ibang tribes outside the barn dahil wala na yun doon sa uh, territorial the, the jurisdiction ni Bangsa Moro din. Kaya yan yung na-specified na ano. Actually may isa pang clause doon na nagsasabi din kasi halimbawa yung iba pang mga ano uh, halimbawa yung sa island provinces yung uh, mga sama dilaot na gusto rin nilang magiging. Hindi natin tinitingnan yung religion, yung pagiging Islam. Yung tinitingnan natin yung mga dugo na nalalantay. Uh, yung pagiging Islam nila ay dahil pinili nila na maging Islam. Pero mas natin natin doon yung pagiging teduray nila. Kaya tama na yung mga kampo. Hindi natin tinitingnan na dahil naging Islamized IP sila. So parati ang discussion ng non-moro IP together with our brother uh, Islamized IP. Settled na kami actually dito at nagkaisa na kami na kami ay non-moro IP at hindi namin titingnan yung mga kinaani ba namin mga spirituality or religion. So parang ganun yun. Uh, para ma-represent 
So, sino yung representation na yun? Kaya merong malinaw na dalawang reserve seat si Nanmoro IP dun sa structure o bang sa Moro government. So, parang ganito yung discourse eh, na maalaala ko nung ninegotiate yung mga uh, identity ito uh, sa sino-sino ba yung mga tao sa bangsa mo. Uh, pag halimbawa, pag sinabi niya, pero yung nag-give na uh, iko-contest nila yung pag-delimate ng um, body processing ng NCIP uh, sa bangsa mo. Uh, pero kung babalikan mo, ano ba yung pinuprovide ni bangsa mo organic mo pagdating doon sa mga karapatan ng mga IP? So, sinasabi niya yung section 3 nandiyan yung indigenous people's rights Sinasabi niya dyan si Native Title o Pusa Kainid, Indigenous Customs and Tradition, yung Justice System, Indigenous Political Structure, yung Equitable Share sa revenue na makakuha within the Ancestral Land o din ng Moro IT kasama yung FDIC, yung political participation nila dun sa bangsa Moro government, at yung freedom of choice nila as to their identity. Siyempre, pag ikokontest ito ni Parliament, Parang di ba, ano ba yung sinasabi ni BOL pag kinokontest mo yung rights ng mga IP na ito ay ma-recognize at uh, makilala yung kanilang mga lupa kung yung mismong BOL na kung saan nakasulat mm-hmm. at uh, ginagarantiyan niya yung karapatan ng mga katutubo ay inipokontest uh, ni BPA. So, hindi ba taliwas siya doon sa sinasabi ni Bang Samoro o Gamit niya? Una yung issue nung may mechanism na ba si MIPA para doon sa pag-process ng ancestral domain and the consequential issuance of an uh, AD title. Uh, one, hindi ako sigurado kasi hindi ho ako ang nasa MIPA. Uh, so hindi ko pa alam kung meron na yon na detalyado na kung mag-file ka ng AD claim sa MIPA, ay may process na siya. So, hindi ko yun sigurado. We'll have to ask si Minister Ulama. Second na clarification ay hindi ko kinukontest ng Bangsamoro government yung rights of the indigenous peoples. The enumerated rights uh, uh, ay hindi ko kinukontest yun. Ang kinukontest ng Bangsamoro government is the jurisdiction of the NCIP Region 12 to intrude into the territory of the Bangsamoro and issue or undertake the process of delineation and subsequently issue an ancestral domain title. Yun ho, talagang kinu-question yun. Kasi ang assertion ay nasa Constitution, Article 10, na yung ancestral domain at saka natural resources is a power granted the autonomous region. It is also in the enumeration in the peace agreement uh, na pinermahan natin na yung AD at saka yung natural resources ay bang Samoro government ang may hawak noon. Hindi ho si NCIP sa Region 12 o kaya sa Manila. Uh, so hindi ho yun ang, hindi ho issue yung rights. Ang issue ho ay jurisdiction. Sino ang may hawak? Sinong opisina? So yun po yung uh, malinaw doon. Yung discourse over non-IP, uh, non-Moro IP at saka yung um, indigenous people in general, tama ho yun na yung categorization doon sa non-Moro IP ay niresort lang natin yon para ma-insure na yung political representation doon sa minority na IP in the Bangsa Moro ay sila ang makahawak nun. Kasi kung generic lang yan na indigenous people, indigenous din kami, indigenous yung mga tauso at saka yung mga maranaw, wala hong makukuhang representation yung mga Tedoray. Uh, kasi kukonti lang sila. So ikukontis ng Maguindanao niya, ng Maranao. So yung representation in the parliament for uh, IP, kung walang categorization na ng IP, hindi ho makukuha ng minority. So para ho sigurado na meron sila, kaya ho nag-resort tayo dun sa non-Moro IP. Uh, but does, this one does not negate the fact na lahat tayo IP. Kami ho ay IP din. Uh, as much as yung mga Tadoray ay IP. So yun ho yung uh, clarification lang. Okay. Thank you. We will be having the last question from Bong Fenis. Ang, ang question is, saan humuhugot ng mandato ang MIPA? Tatlo ho. Ang hugot ni MIPA. <laughs> Kung saan. Una, nasa Constitution, Article 
10. If you look at the enumeration of the powers granted the autonomous region in, Mus in Muslim Mindanao, nakalagay doon very specific ancestral domain and natural resources. Second, it is in the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro. It's included in the Annex, uh, uh, doon sa um, second Annex ng uh, CAB. Yung enumeration ng powers granted the Bangsamoro as exclusive, nandun yung ancestral domain and natural resources. That's also the enumeration that you find in the organic law. Uh, so yun po yung uh, hinuhugutan ni Mipa nung uh, powers niya over ancestral domain. Uh, okay, so one last question from uh, Ma'am Froyline Mendoza. Um, Hello, uh, attorney. Good yes. afternoon, attorney. Buti nagkita tayo. May isa na lang talaga akong concern. Yung sa pilar nga, attorney, wala pa silang barangay chairman ba? Inaantay daw kayo. Uh, ano gawin natin doon? Kasi mag-one year na yun, attorney. Maawa ka. <laughs> wala silang barangay chairman. Wala silang kopon ban. Humingi sila sa TFWO. Dalawang rin lang mabigay namin. Walang operation. Attorney, gawan mo na yun ang paraan. Kawawa sila, nagbakit pa sila. <laughs> Aray, ganito ho ang problema natin sa Barangay Pilar. Uh, yung Barangay Chairman, si Jordan, ay binaril at namatay. Uh, and then, pagkamatay niya, normally, yung first kagawad magsasaksid. So you will have succession. Uh, so automatic ko na magsasaksid yun. Unfortunately, pagkamatay ni Kap Kapitan, ni Jordan, nagpunta rito sa akin yung lahat ng barangay kagawad ng barangay Pilar, expressing at daladala -dala nila yung papel nila na hindi sila mag assume uh, through a succession dahil hindi daw ho nila mag a na kaya nilang i-secure yung peace and order sa kanilang barangay. So, hindi ko ma pa-assume yung next kagawa dahil ayaw niya. So sinabi ko sa kanila, hindi ho pwede na hindi kayo mag-assume. Pag hindi kayo mag-assume, ay kailangan umalis kayo doon sa pwesto para ma 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 mabakit yan. Eh lahat umalis. Now, dahil umalis lahat, yung walang gusto mag-assume doon sa mga kagawad, hindi natin matatrigger yung provision ng local government code na yung mayor can appoint in case of a vacancy upon the recommendation of the Sangguniang Barangay. Kasi wala nang magre-recommend, nauhus yung Sangguniang Barangay kasi ayaw mag-assume. So wala sila lahat, walang trigger mechanism for the Sangguniang Barangay, or for the mayor rather, to issue the appointment. So hindi maka-appoint ngayon si mayor dahil walang recommendation from the Sangguniang Barangay. So yun yung naging deadlock. Now, in the national government, ang solution nila dyan was to issue an administrative order empowering the secretary of the DILG to issue the appointment. Unfortunately, in the region, wala tayong ganoon na uh, mechanism. So, hindi siya matrigger. So, I sent um, a draft administrative order to the office of the chief minister na mag-issue sila ng similar na administrative order. Uh, wherein kung walang trigger for the mayor to exercise the appointing authority dahil naubos yung lahat ng uh, sangguniang barangay, yung Ministry of the Interior and Local Government ang mag-appoint. Lumabas lang ho yung administrative order uh, from the Office of the Chief Minister, I think two weeks ago. So pinaprocess na ho namin ngayon yung appointment. Uh, but I've committed to the mayor sa South Upi na before gawin yung appointments na yan, ay una, i-consult natin yung mga tao doon, consult natin yung local government units para humapag agrian kung sino yung uh, i-appoint yung papaupuin. So, hopefully, uh, baka next week ko ay magawa na natin yan. I'm, I'm scheduled to visit yung South UP dahil binigyan din ho namin ng municipal hall yung South Upi. Dahil if you remember, in the 1990s, nasunog yung municipal hall ng South Upi. So kasama ko sa pag-uusapan namin yung, ni Mayor yung appointment ng mga marangay officials sa Pilar. So uh, sana, Freeline, ay maayos na ho natin yan dahil talaga hong 
uh, hirap din yung mga tao dun sa Barangay Pilar. <laughs> so this is going to be very... Thank you, attorney! <laughs> Ito na yung very last question. Wala sila kapon man, attorney, mawa ka. <laughs> Complex na problema. Okay. So, this is going to be the very last question. At wala na talaga after this. Uh, they're asking, sir, na ano na ngayon ang status ng IP code? At honestly, hindi ko ako member ng parliament. <laughs> wala, wala pa ho akong feedback uh, sa uh, one from the parliament. But normally, yung mga legislation originates from the appropriate ministry. Uh, so like yung local governance code originated from my ministry. So kami ang tinas. So I would suppose yung IP code manggagaling dun sa MIPA. So sana po ay ma maayos na nila Minister Ulamayan para ho ma ma mainak na yung IP code. Uh, if you look at the organic law, yung bundle of rights guaranteed naman yon. May plus-plus pa ho kayo doon. Yung political, uh, yung recognition ng uh, political structure ninyo. Plus yung uh, in-increase namin yung um, direct benefits to the, to the community para doon sa EDU ng mga resources. So from the traditional conception doon sa uh, percentage na nakukuha lang ng IP doon sa surface rights, uh, we we very specifically provided in the organic law na may claim kayo doon sa uh, resources being exploited from the area of the indigenous people far above the uh, provision in the IPRA law. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. thank you very much, Minister Nagib. Uh, we just realized that we still have so much to learn and understand and we thank you, uh, thank you very much for coming, all of our panelists and our participants. And we, we really want to have uh, more spaces like this. Um, we are on podcast and you can listen to us uh, on the Mindanus podcast through Spotify and Anchor. So uh, to close, may we ask again, <laughs> Mr. Gian Libot, uh, the Senior Program Officer of Internews. Sir? Thank you. Uh, so I, I don't want to belabor the, the point too much. Uh, we spent a long time. First of all, I just want to really thank Minda News for this mm -hmm. forum. I understand that, you know, with the issues of COVID-19, it's really been dominating the discourse from Luzon to Visayas and Mindanao. And it's really good that Minda News also looks at other issue, issues such as protracted conflict, uh, especially as someone who is also born and raised in Mindanao. I often feel like the issue of conflict and the complexities of conflict are often ignored and we tend to look at uh, big brother issues. Uh, but the, the, the notable issues of South UP definitely need to be highlighted as well, especially as how it intersects with COVID and it affects both Moro and even non-Moro uh, indigenous people. Um, I think I really just want to uh, congratulate the, the organizers and also thank the speakers for this forum, especially Minister uh, Najib Serimbo, who's been uh, an, a, an active proponent of transparency. I really want to commend uh, that side of the, of the discourse because I think uh, it, information such as this one is very crucial uh, in making us understand further how complex uh, crises are, uh, especially as, as they unfold. So I hope for a peaceful resolution. I want to thank everyone, especially Minda News, for this forum. Thank you for having us here, and also thank you for hosting this uh, specific event. Congratulations. Thank you.